September 2017. Ministry of Liberation with Robert at Sushi, Encounters with Jesus. I was praying to God and began to see angels around me. But one thing puzzled me. I could not see the Holy Spirit, but I could feel His presence strongly. One day I felt His hand touch my chest and a warmth entered my heart. I began to pray to God asking Him to show me the Holy Spirit since I saw Jesus Himself. He looks like a simple man and not that Jesus that artists paint with green eyes. But in this simple man what he has is very wonderful. He has a body full of glory that enchants anyone who approaches him. Every time I see Jesus Christ, a supernatural love springs from my chest, a sensation I felt when I married my wife, but this feeling I feel for Jesus is even stronger. It's so strong that you give up everything for him. If he tells you to leave your family for him you end up doing it to the point of dying for Jesus and for his sake. You're wondering why you do not feel like sacrificing yourself for him like I am saying. I did not even have the courage to preach his word, but from the moment I met Jesus personally, it was love at first sight. Jesus is much more than you think. He is so polite his voice is soft when he talks to you his love envelops you in full. The feeling is very wonderful and the thrill of seeing him is extraordinary. I grew up listening to my father talks about Jesus. He was already in love and had incredible intimacy with him, but I only heard Bible stories about him. But when you face your king, it is totally different. One thing is for you to hear how much Jesus is glorious and another thing is to see him in front of you. The warmth of his glory has enveloped me since the first day and I have never been the same again. You will no longer think like a natural man, but you will think like Jesus. From the eyes of Jesus emanated love that enveloped my soul. The love I feel for Jesus explains the same feeling the church will have when we meet Jesus at the wedding feast. When you meet Jesus, you will let go of all sin for him, and the dimension of your love grows every moment. The Holy Spirit Now I wanted to see the Holy Spirit, I needed to know the Holy Spirit personally and I began to pray without asking Jesus to reveal him because my spiritual vision saw angels and demons, but I could not see the Holy Spirit near me. I believe that even with the spiritual visions of the supernatural it is limited, and can see as far as God allows. I opened the word of God and went to Luke 24 16, but their eyes were closed so that they would not know him. Luke 24 31 Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Brother, this passage took place after Jesus was resurrected. He was walking closely alongside the disciples and they did not recognize him because their eyes were closed at that moment. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they recognized Jesus. I understood that even having the gift of seeing the supernatural, I could not see the Holy Spirit because my eyes were closed so as not to see God. The Holy Spirit is divine and cannot be seen all the time. It is the same also with Jesus. Yet God gave me the grace to see the Holy Spirit. This experience marked my ministry forever. I was praying with my wife and my vision opened. A man dressed in majesty walked slowly through my room. His body shone like light and from within it fire sparks out. I knew it was the Holy Spirit, for his glory was far greater than any angel I have ever seen. His splendor is so great that I looked at his body of light and my eyes could not bear to see him. I lowered my head so as not to blind my eyes. He started walking through my room and all his glory shone in that place. My wife could not see him, but as the Holy Spirit moved in our room she managed to feel his presence and was seized by his power and began to speak in tongues. She could not control herself and her body began to tremble with such unction. He approached me, and I was unable to look at his face that looked like the sun. I heard his voice saying, I am always close to the true servants of God even though they do not see me. I never leave this house. Every time you pray, I am listening to your prayers and interceding to God for you. I have comforted you in your sorrows by putting the balm to heal your hearts. The church teaches that those who experience a spiritual birth will be called the children of God. They are born through me, it is I who regenerated them, just as I generated the word in the womb of Mary. Those who die to the world will be born to God and will grow in my presence. 
Of these, I am caring, but for those who have not died to the world they cannot be born again as children of God. Sins attract the demons to their lives, but holiness draws me to stay in their lives. I give strength so that it does not stop. I give spiritual resistance in the hour of the temptations. I stay away from Christians who engage in confusion and strife through fights within the church as they have thrown away the portion that I put into their lives. Holiness calls me close to you so that my spirit may join your spirits by becoming one. Robert, keep your olive oil, do not let the world steal it from you. Make your oil multiply through holiness and prayer. Seek God and do not stop. If you do what I give you your spiritual temperature will increase because I will increase your portion and I will leave you more fervent. My presence will become stronger in you and my warmth will warm your soul. Do not let this flame go out, but let it come on more and more. Do not lose the warmth of my presence because of the things of this world. I do not want you to be cold or lukewarm. My seal is in your life, this is the guarantee that you are saved. A righteous Christian will always be led by my presence every day. There is my supernatural strength accompanying the faithful believer who lives a life inseparable from God. My anointing is pure and does not mix with sin, but everything that is holy and separated from the world will have my anointing. Tell the church that to have my pure essence that comes from heaven, they will have to renounce the world. If they live a life in the world and at the same time wanting to serve God they will never see results in their spiritual lives. Their strength to seek God must be greater than the cravings of their flesh, if they do not have the strength to give up sin they will lose to the world. When they receive my anointing in their lives they will want to have it forever. Those who have had experience with me have already felt it and will receive the heavenly oil in their lives. If they break with the world they will have their spiritual lives linked to me. I will change their spiritual lives, I will transform their souls until they are born again. Tell the church to pray and there will be spiritual reactions in their lives that will make the supernatural happen. Those who are praying without stopping their temperatures will rise until fire will begin to come out of their mouths when they are preaching the holy word. Holiness is important to the life of the church they will have the spirit of life that is me. I will give them authority and make them shine like the light in the darkness. Many are led astray because of the trials that beset them and a great spiritual emptiness is in their lives. Even coming every day to the church, they are with this emptiness. This is due to the absence of me in their lives that is spiritual scarcity. They do not pray and have no intimacies with me. When the Holy Spirit stopped talking he approached my praying wife. His presence grew louder and she did not stop speaking in tongues. I saw chains breaking that still held her and her illness came out as a black shadow of her body. The sin that was in her body was burned and came out of it looking grey. The anointing of the Holy Spirit shattered the yoke of the sinful flesh that was still in her. My wife had an illness in her womb and was cured. The demons that tried to approach my house when they saw my house burning in flames ran away. My wife has come very close to God and when this happens the tendency is for the presence of the Holy Spirit to become stronger in her life. Transformation comes from contact with the Holy Spirit in your daily prayer. As the Holy Spirit approached me his hand entered my stomach. I felt a very strong heat inside the stomach. He pulled a ball of flesh inside me that smelled bad. He said, Today I released you from a beginning of cancer caused by an unhealthy diet you ingest. If this cancer were to develop your life would be short on earth, but you have been useful for God's plans and you cannot die now. His power enveloped my body his anointing was even in the marrow of my blood. The reaction that his anointing caused on my body was extraordinary. His fire invaded all the cells of my body, filling me with anointing to the bones. This happened to Elisha whose dead bones were filled with such an anointing that a dead man revived upon touching his bones. Once when some Israelites were burying a man, they spied a band of these raiders. So they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and fled. But as soon as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man revived and jumped to his feet. 2 Kings 13 21 The Holy Spirit disappeared from my room and my wife stopped speaking in tongues. Drops or sweat poured from her face. She did not see the Holy Spirit, 
but she knew he was so close to us. Holy Spirit not behind false healings and miracles church, the Holy Spirit is not a dove. He is a person and has the same essence of Jesus. He is divine, he is holy, many have blasphemed against him when they ascribe miracles and healings which the demons made to the person of the Holy Spirit. He told me these things. Everything that happens supernaturally is sometimes the work of demons and the people attribute it to him as if he operated in the lives of the false prophets. As if he approved of the deception and yet operated in the work of deception. I tell you that he is far from the lie. His sadness does not let him stay in these places, because of the rot that stinks a lot. He is holy and cannot stay inside churches of Babylonians. Anointing of the Holy Spirit You need the presence of the Holy Spirit every day to overcome the world. Have you borne fruit to God, where are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? You depend on him to do the work, without him you will not get it. Each one is different from the other, no one is like you, you are the unique being created by God, do not imitate anyone. Learn to produce more for God, stop asking just for material things, know how to offer what God wants. Produce for God and save your royal reserve for the tough times. The anointing of God will envelop you and give you spiritual strength to endure the end. His light will kindle with the oil that is poured out upon you through your intimacy and praying to the Holy Spirit. You will be a spiritually active person and the light will shine upon you. If you are living a sanctified life then receive this new anointing poured out upon you. Without sanctification, there is no oil. Without the oil there is no light, receive the portion of the life of that word in your interiors. Your holiness will lead the Holy Spirit into your life and you will be enveloped in his glory. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit will envelop your life with your glory. How good it is to have contact with the Holy Spirit, isolating oneself from sin and moving away from the illusions of this world. The Holy Spirit will give you revelations when you visit him personally. Brothers the Holy Spirit works in a special way in the lives of those who give their lives to God. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit and become a vessel being used in his hands and do the will of God, look at your life and see what is missing to adjust. He wants to occupy the empty spaces in your life. He has an abundance of anointing to pour into your life. It is worth giving up the illusion of the world in exchange for this divine presence. I see the church with a hard heart does not want to renounce their vanities, preventing the Holy Spirit from working in their lives. Church, do not resist the Holy Spirit. He is wisdom, but the devil enters the body without asking permission and takes the soul to hell. The Holy Spirit wants to leave you in the holy image of God so that the world can see that glow, but the devil wants to deform this image leaving you like beasts. How many brothers have anger in their hearts? threaten others, argue over things, add nothing, and create strife, and within their homes are beasts. The Holy Spirit wants to change that in you and to transform your lives by leaving it free and light of it all. He softens the hard hearts of stones. A righteous person shines and a set of qualities is added in your life. For those who are born again, there are so many spiritual qualities in them, there are so many fruits added in the lives of those who serve God. Heavenly perfume I had a vision of the saints in white robes and a heavenly scent emanating from their bodies. I saw the purity of their garments and the light attracted to their encounter. The light entered their bodies and then left them glowing throughout the church. Jesus said to me, that aroma was extracted from the heavenly flowers to perfume the saints. Stink of sin I had a vision with those who live in sin. Their clothes were dirty and their bodies stank of carrion which also exhaled from these people. Jesus said to me, the sins of these people stink before me. True and false servants after this revelation, I had a vision of many preachers being raised by shepherds and not by God. They were carnal and sought man's certification and ordination to appear legitimate in ministry. Brothers, God qualifies a man for ministry by holiness. We are not to take up a position to do the shepherd's will. God can anoint you to be his representative on earth and be a minister of the gospel, do not expect the anointing of men. Through this witness I see people having intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I see believers learning to speak with the Holy Spirit and understanding his will.
walking in the direction he commands. I see God raising people from the ashes. Jesus said, I only ask that the spiritual tank of believers be filled with abundant oil before I can ignite it. The believers must pray to keep the flames burning. For the saints who continue to grow in the grace of my spirit and have not backslidden in their spiritual lives, I have great promises for them. I had a vision of many believers losing the portion that they had received. Their flames have been erased because they let the cold of the world freeze their lives by getting involved with the things of this world, they have lessened their time of seeking God and giving more time to that which distances them from the presence of the Holy Spirit. To rekindle this flame that has gone out, spend time on the Holy Word and sincere prayer. The more you pray, the more the fire of your life becomes inflamed again. Breaching with oil after that night of impact with the presence of the Holy Spirit, my wife was to preach in a house meeting. The service was only for women. She was overflowing with oil, and when she preached, she burned that house and all the women were renewed with the power of God. A believer when he has intimacy with the Holy Spirit is a receiver of God's grace and a disciple maker where he forms followers. At night I went to preach where I congregated and I had a vision of the Holy Spirit landing on the shoulder of a brother. This time he was in the shape of a dove and moved inside the church flying all over the place. The activity of the Holy Spirit began in the church. He is the light of the life of those who seek him. I saw the Holy Spirit removing spiritual scales from the eyes of many brethren. That dove landed on my body and I felt electricity invading my soul. I was filled with the anointing and when a brother passed near me he felt that presence and was impacted by the power of God. This young man had never spoken in tongues and for the first time, he spoke receiving this gift. My wife also became more participatory in church. Bride we returned home and I had a vision of the Holy Spirit. This time he was in the form of a man and adorned a woman in a white dress. The Holy Spirit adorned the bride not with the jewels of the world but with the spiritual adornments. The bride was adorned with perseverance, virtue, forgiveness, lightness, love, faithfulness, gratitude, docility, hope, harmony, happiness, union, tranquility, piety, peace, tenderness, perfection, wisdom, purity, softness, grace, renunciation, patience and solidarity. This woman looked like a bride ready to marry. Jesus told me, my spirit is preparing my bride to meet me. Fire the next day I went to visit the church and when I began to preach my vision opened and I was seeing rains of fire falling inside the church. I was shocked to receive this rain, but the people of the church felt nothing. I asked Jesus, why am I the only one who felt this rain? Jesus told me, this rain was from me, but the people are spiritually dead and those who have died are unable to feel anything. If they feel nothing, it is due to the absence of my spirit in them, their lamps have gone out. They need to light them urgently before it is too late, they need the renewal. Born again those who are born again do not return to sin and they turn away from evil to maintain the purity of their garments. The flesh is weak, but if it is not mortified for the world it will take pleasure in sin. Our life is preserved from sin when we crucify and die to the self-life. When we are born of the Spirit we inherit the sanctified character which is one of the attributes of God. Those who are born again do not walk in darkness. They are serene, peaceful and have self-control. They are not nervous about the persecutions and they do not explode with anger. They can control their impulses and have quiet minds. I saw people fruitful by the Holy Spirit who gives good testimony in their homes before their family men who bear witness to change in their businesses and neighborhood. Young people of God who give good testimony in school, in a course, and in college. They are people who give examples of faith wherever they go, they shine through their holy lives and gain souls through their behaviors. People saw transformations in them and wanted that change for their lives. Many churches are spiritually dead and lack the power to transform lives. People go to their services empty and leave their services empty. In the church where I am pastoring, we are doing a job to provide spiritual services. People who visit us, cry under conviction during the preaching, become souls hungry and thirsting for God. They are satiated and their spirits are strengthened.
the Holy Spirit has visited the empty, oppressed and depressed people who come to the church. They have surrendered their lives. The Holy Spirit has treated their souls, filled their voids and renewed those lives. My ministry is dependent on the Holy Spirit. We do not live a day of worship without him visiting us. Someone brought a Christian in the wheelchair and God revealed to me that he is going to be a missionary. I bent my knee and said, Lord, how will he do the mission if he is a wheelchair? Jesus said, put your hands on his head and say a prayer, I will raise him to my glory, and everyone will know that I am the God of this place. I did as God told me and that man got up from the wheelchair and many souls were converted that night and the church did not stop to glorify God. God had a great work for that paralytic, and he lifted him from the wheelchair to do the mission. The barrier that prevented this man from doing the work was his paralysis, but God removed it. And today may have healthy legs and do not want to go to church. They are sitting with their arms folded watching sin and seeing many go to hell. And after that paralyzed man walked. I had a vision with an angel that appeared to me. He came over and touched my hand and it caught fire. The angel said, Jesus today give you the gift of healing. After this vision, I began to pray with the laying on of hands and the sick were healed. This gift that was given by God heals the body and also the soul. I received a Christian who was abandoned by her husband. She's been serving God for 20 years. Jesus showed me in a vision a shattered vase. I said, Lord, what does that mean? He replied, It is the soul of this woman, pray for her. I put my hand on her head and prayed. In a week she was restored and her soul was healed. Affliction to salvation I went to visit two Christians who were hospitalized with serious and prolonged illnesses. I did not know these brothers, but Jesus took me there for a purpose. I asked Jesus why the two of them were not healed to do the work. Jesus answered, they are rebellious, they do not do my work and live sinning. Their churches are praying for God to have mercy on them and begged him not to let them die. For the cry of my people, I will save them, but they shall not rise from their beds. I'm preparing to take them to heaven. I am breaking these vessels into sickness and remaking into perfect vessels. They are sorry and their hearts are broken. They asked me for forgiveness and I forgave them. They want them to be healed to do my work but they will not resist the pleasures of the world. If I lift them from the bed they will do my work for a short time and they will go astray. And I will lose their soul. Satan is preparing bonds of death to reap their souls. They will not get up from these beds. The two are being purified by the fire so I collect their souls. I'm even refining the gold in the fire until they shine. All their impurities are coming out of them. I have visited the hospital and done good doing the good work, but the critical Christians who do nothing for God only open their mouths to persecute me. I've been cursed by some of them. Regardless of doing good or not, it does not matter to them. They will always speak badly because their hearts are evil, they hardly praise. The criticism is in their hearts, nothing is good for them, nor Jesus escaped criticism from the Pharisees. What matters is that we are perfect for God. Do not be concerned if you will please people, just do the will of God. Your value to God is priceless, enjoy the peace of God, be of service to Him. Do not oppress yourself with affronts, be happy in Jesus, feel His presence and softness and forget those who persecute you. Even if your family themselves speak ill of you, they are not of importance who defame you. Even if the people of your church persecute you because of the word, do not listen to what they think of you. Your life revolves around Jesus. He is the one who answers your call and your prayer, not the people who talk about you. Who will approve of you is God and not the men who give their opinions to others. Call it fanatics and radicals. You are responsible for your actions, not those that speak badly of you. Each one will answer for their sins before the judgment seat of Christ in the day of judgment. If you preach the truth, do not expect them to be welcomed as you wish. Each person has a different reaction to what one preaches. Word, I want to speak to everyone who likes to read the Bible. The more you know the word, the more responsibility you will have to walk in it. The more gifts of the Holy Spirit you have received, the more you will have to work for God. 
the more spiritual it is, the greater the responsibility and charge. God charges the measure he gives to his servants. Whoever has little of God, he charges little. Whoever has much of it will be charged a lot. The more we grow in grace, the more the devil chases us. Those who ascend spiritual steps are the targets of demons. The signs accompany the saints and always come true. God gives authority to his servants and people go to them for help. It is at this hour that souls are one.